Hi, my name is Morten, and in this video we will be looking at implementing facets for our category and product navigation. Facets is the ability for the user to narrow their search based on certain criteria. Typically you want to uh, allow facets if you have large scale categories with a lot of different attributes that will help your users to find what they need. Facets take form of different uh, keys and values you can search for. Uh, typically those are defined by the definitions on your products. But in fact facets can be used also for categories and catalogs and, and stores even though it's not very commonly used, but the technology underlying in, in the bold APIs of WooCommerce is uh, powering all the different indexes. This means that there's a generic concept around facets, regardless of what concept you're, you're searching for. Typically, we will be using facets for products, so that's also what this exercise will be all about. When you do a faceted search, you have to define in your index definition, like we saw in the previous video, um, what uh, fields you want to have facet navigation for. After you, you have set that up, WooCommerce will automatically give you back the available facets based on the search criteria that you input. If you're using the top level APIs, what you'll get back is, uh, is just all the facets with all the hits and all the different uh, attributes uh, that exists. You don't have to do anything else. Uh, after you have defined that in your index definition. And we'll take a closer look at in, of that in just a few minutes. <clears throat> so there's different parts to this exercise. First there is, you want to render the facets as is. So when you browse a category, uh, you want to see all the products with all the uh, associated facets available. Once your users start to click on the different facet values, so those are grouped per, per field name. In this case, I'm, I'm looking at our demo store. Um, so for color size, we have all these different values calculated by, uh, by the search index. You get those back. And once you click on a value, you have to also insert that into the API to, uh, to make that go. And that's what we're here to explore in the top level APIs of WooCommerce, namely the catalog library API. So let's get uh, straight into the code and see how we can do that. All right, so I'm back in my category controller and that is, uh, that is the page that we want to do faceted search based on. Um, so that is, uh, I want to do facets based on the category that I'm watching right now, but you can, up, you can actually also combine facets with full text search. So for example, I search for shoe in the storefront and then I want to see all results based on that. And since there's probably quite a, a lot of views, we can do facets based on that as well. The technique is the same. So in this case, I'm just taking foundation in the category page. As I said uh, a few seconds ago, when a user click on a facet value, we want to input that into our, uh, to our controller. So if we take a, a, a quick glance again, what we have done is that we have implemented in, in this uh, masterclass solution uh, facets as uh, query string parameters. So we have to take that out from the uh, request and pass that into the APIs. It's quite trivial to do so. Um, so we just have a, a small helper that are not that important for, uh, for this use case. Uh, all it does is that it uh, finds all the query string parameters and it filters away um, those that are used in the uh, in the catalog context, so product variant category, categories and catalogs, uh, because those would tamper with our search result. Then we loop over the parameters and then we create a dictionary or a list of, uh, of facets that we then return and, and uh, convert into a dictionary that, that the API understands. That happens down here. So here we actually have the facet dictionary available, uh, which will then contain the users uh, inputs for, for the facets. All right. So once we have that, we call catalog library that get products where we uh, pass in the uh, GUID of the category and the facet dictionary. So there's no fancy stuff going on here. This is just what we implemented previously. Um, the facets results that will, will contain the, uh, the list of products and the list of facets available. 
So what we need to do now is basically just map the facets over to our category model and then see how it works on the storefront. So I have a, on my view model, I have a list of facets that I want to, uh, to use. So I pass that into my, uh, to my map facets helper method down here. And I need to pass in the list of facets, which comes from the facet result set. On my facet result set, I have the list of facets and I have the results. The results are the, uh, are the products. Uh, that corresponds with, uh, with what's in the category and, and based on my user selections for the facets. Uh, and so will the facets, those are also a drill down um, result of what the user has already selected based on, on uh, what we passed in from the query string parameters. And the total count is what do we have in the index um, in total. So I pass in my facets here and now it's uh, just uh, time to to uh, run our helper function down here and map those into our view model and it's going to be quite uh, simple I basically just have to uh, iterate each of my uh, facets and then I have to create a new facets view model where I then add into my list up here So I create my, uh, my object and my facets value model will have a key which corresponds with the field name. And then I have my, uh, my display name that I want to, uh, to show for the user. So that is not necessarily the same as the, as the, as the key. We'll take a, a, a quick recap of that in just a few minutes, how that looks like on, uh, on the index definition. But remember that the key is the field name, whereas the display name was, uh, was manually defined in the index definition. So that's my, uh, my facets. Now we also have the facet values. So that is uh, for color, it would be blue, green, red, yellow. And uh, it also has a, uh, a hits which is how many of, uh, of this particular attribute do we have now. So on my, uh, on my facet, I have a list of facet values. Again, it's fairly, fairly trivial. And I basically just need to map my count. And my key. And key is the actual value that we saved on the product. So for, uh, for our shirt we created earlier, that would be uh, the fabric and that would be wool. In this case, let's try to see if we can add some, some more data in. So we have a little bit to, to demo. That was the value. And then we of course have to add that to our list of facets. Just like this. So let's try to build the solution and see if it works. All right, so I am back on my category page with my shirt on it. The shirt we created in the previous video where we uh, also created our index definition. And uh, I have two facets up here. I have one called disk with an, a value called awesome shirt. And I have prices including tax.eur 15% where I have my, uh, my ranges with one product in it, which is the one uh, with 115 euros. Uh, I only have one product in here. So let's very quickly explore the uh, Index definition again.
here I have my uh, my index definition and we can see that for E and US I set my description field to be the display name to be disk. If I try to uh, to set it up here, I can see in my query string parameters which I'm using to generate the facets based off that it's using description rather than disk and that's because the description is the field name matching what I have right here where I call dot facet on my uh, on my field and uh, desk is the English translation of my of my field um, so I only call facet on my description and on my prices including tax so let's try to further enrich in my fields here and say I also want to do um, facets based on color tag and fabric So to do that, I would call uh, display name again in ENUS, and my display name should be uh, color. And I want to do facets based on this field as well. The same with uh, tech display name ENUS. Let's do product text just so we can see it one more time. And I also call facets on this one. And last, I want my fabric to, uh, to be facets as well. And I want to have display names on it as well. E-N-U-S. Fabric like this. So let's try to compile this. I now have what I wanted to see. I have my product tags, shirt wool blue. I have my prices, I have my fabrics, and I have my color here as well. Um, but let's try to add in just a few more products to, uh, to this category here. So we can see that there are in fact multiple values that we can use and that it will uh, slim down my selections. And in here I then want to create a new product. My facets here will also work for the for for variants. So if I'm using variants for my for my facets, those will, will work as well, regardless if I'm using a product family or a variant to have my facet filters for. So this is my shirt number two. This one is very expensive. And that's because the fabric is uh, gold and the color is, uh, <laughs> well, gold. And the tag is uh, expensive. And the description is awesome gold shirt. Of course, a description does not necessarily make sense to have as a, as a facet, so, so that's probably a, quite a bad example. But let's try to refresh our category page. And as we can now see, we have shirt 2 in here as well. It's 460, so if I take a look at my prices, I now have a product in this range as well. I didn't actually do anything, so the APIs are just calculating my new uh, types uh, based on what the data set in my index are. I have blue and I have gold. I have two descriptions. I now have wool and gold and I have two different product tags. So sh should I, for example, go in and, uh, and create a, a third one and just to, uh, to see that we also have the different hits being automatically calculated. So this one is also 400. 
my fabric is wool and color is gold and the tag is uh, what? Question mark. And this is a weird shirt. So let's go back and refresh our front end. And we now have our third product, surprise, surprise. And if we take a look at the prices, we now have two products in this range. And we also have uh, wool and gold. And we also have a description. So the facets and the values are automatically being calculated. And if I had more uh, values that I was creating facets for, like uh, um, if we also have uh, shoes in this category here and shoes would naturally have different facets based on the shoes then of course that would automatically also just appear and once i start to um, narrow down my searches we will see that the products are automatically filtered and i only have the different hits in the different uh, values that i that i see here so both of these search are are 460 so i have two products in this range uh, and i have no more products in, in these ranges up here but if i remove gold again my my third product appeared again and now i can see that range here as well and all I did was pass in the user selections to the API and get those back. And uh, the data set will automatically adjust based on this. Um, we still have one more uh, thing that are quite funny, which is the product tags here. Because I would actually expect that my product tags would be somewhat um, uh, exploded into the different um, value so i had three tags on this product shirt wool and blue i don't want to have that as a single value i want to have a selection for shirt for wool and for blue so let's try to explore how we can achieve this so back in my index definition i can instead say uh, for my tag field which i want to have multi values for, for the single field that the type is not a string but it's an i enumerable of strings instead. So let's try to compile the solution. So for a, for a list of strings in newcomers, it will look for a delimiter, which is uh, pipes. So, uh, so if you have a free text field and you want multiple values, you have to separate them by pipes. Uh, another built-in property that uh, works well with multi-values are enums that can have multiple values. Uh, which can be configured on your data type uh, for that particular field. But let's try to explore how the value would look like in the database uh, to make sure that it explodes by all the different values in, in that single field. Every time we modify the index definition, we have to run the scratch index again because the uh, index definition is what determines what goes into uh, to the index at index times. So uh, when I set my, my field to be unknowable instead of just a, a single string, we have to tell uh, Lucene that it has to store it as, as a list of values instead. So let's go back into our back office. Let's go down and run the scratch indexer. Click index everything from scratch. This won't take long as my data set is quite slim and it will actually automatically update once it's done. There we go. So we can see a total of 17 items were indexed across one language. And there was no errors. So let's try to explore our shirts again see the different tags. Notice it will still say shirt wool blue and that's because our uh, tags was not delimited by the uh, pipe separator. So 
So I will plant my shirt again. And on shirt one, I will have my shirt blue. So let's try to put pipes in between them. And refresh our storefront. And as we can see here on the product tags, I now have a value per pipe separated value in my uh, in my uh, tech facet for uh, for my product. So now my uh, uh, shirt wool and blue was split into separate values. And when I uh, select them individually, they will of course uh, work as a regular facet. And that's it and all there is to know about facets for now. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you in the next one.